Welcome to DC Technet where we experiment experience and we are passionate about sharing our experiences with everyone join us on this journey by liking sharing and subscribing your support motivates us to create more amazing content so let's we let's see what we have on the agenda today so today we'll be focusing on uh, Active Directory Global Catalog and uh, it will be a brief introduction to Global Catalog. I won't be able to go in depth as it will take some time. If you want me to say, explain you how Global Catalog works or Global Catalog in depth, request you just write a comment and I will create a video. So let's see what we have on the agenda today. Today, first of all, we'll see what is a global catalog and why we require a global catalog in the world of Active Directory. And then we'll conclude our session with Active Directory and global catalog partitions. Now for this video, there is a prerequisite you must know Active Directory logical partitions. So let's get started. So what is a global catalog and a global catalog server? So a global catalog is the index of the entire Active Directory forest. So it's the index of the entire Active Directory forest. So we have seen the index of a book. So what we do, we browse through the index and go to the required say page. Same thing over here in Active Directory, we can query the global catalog and find objects in the entire forest, not just the domain. So that's the core concept behind global catalog. It's a global catalog. So Again, global catalog always resides on a domain controller. So in our earlier videos, we have seen what a domain controller is. So global catalog always resides on a domain controller. So any domain controller which holds this global catalog is also called as a global catalog server. So a global catalog is a domain controller which holds complete information of all the objects in its own domain and it holds a partial information of all the objects in the entire forest. So there is a caveat over here. If a domain controller will definitely hold complete information of all the objects in its own domain, but if it's a global catalog, it will hold partial information of all the objects in the entire forest, not the complete information. Now, why this may, why it holds a partial information? So the global catalog stores only the partial information or we can say only the subset of attributes of each object in the active directory forest. So if it would have hold the complete information, the data handling would be too much overhead for a global catalog. So for making the data handling, say, more smoother, what Microsoft did is Microsoft thought and they just make, made sure that only partial information of all the objects in, this, in the entire forest are stored with the global catalog. So this is what a global catalog is and a global catalog server. So let's take an example over here because understanding the theory is okay but the things get more simpler when we go down to an example. So let's say we have two domains in the same forest east.contoso.com and west.contoso.com and we have say domain controllers in each domain 
NYDC and HKDC and both the domain controllers are global catalogs of their respective domains. Now we have a user in east.contoso.com named Peter. Now this New York DC will have all the attributes of Peter that is New York DC will hold complete information of this user object named Peter and Hong Kong DC will hold the partial attributes of the user named or the object Peter it will not hold the complete information because it's a global catalog it will only hold the partial information of the user object Peter which is present in east.contoso.com So, these are some of the partial attributes by default which is held by every global catalog for every object in the entire forest. So, there is a list of attributes which are the part of global catalog by default. So, every global catalog will hold these attributes of every object in the entire forest. Now let's go the other way around. Let's say we have some users, user objects in west.contoso.com domain. So what will happen is their partial attributes will be stored in New York DC because it's a global catalog. But Hong Kong DC will have complete attributes of these user objects. So, hope you have understood the concept of global catalog by this example. So, let's go ahead. So, let us understand why we require global catalog or what are the functions of global catalog. User principal name resolution or UPN resolution one of the functions so what do you mean by upn or user principal name resolution so log on requests made using upn for example sometimes we log on use our username at domain.com require a search of global catalog to identify the dn or the distinguished name of the associated user object so in this case we require global catalog and uh, we have to remember one thing all the universal groups are automatically published in our global catalog so our global catalog knows of each and every universal group in our forest so if you want to know more about group types group scope and group nesting we have say two videos on group types and group nesting so log on requests made in multi domain environments require a use of global catalog that can check the existence of any universal group and determine if the user logging on to is a member of any of those groups so whenever a user logs on in a multi domain environment it will first contact the global catalog to make sure that if that uh, say user is a member of any universal group or not so because the global catalog is the only source of universal group membership information access to global catalog server is a requirement for authentication in multi domain forest so if you have multiple domains in a single forest global catalog is a requirement for authentication so these are the two say major functions or why's of why we require a global catalog so let us understand active directory and global catalog partitions again with an example over here let's say we have 
a forest named contoso.com and we have three domains contoso.com west.contoso.com and east.contoso.com now in contoso.com we have a domain controller named dubai dc in west.contoso.com we have a domain controller named london dc and in our east.contoso.com we have a domain controller named paris dc and all the three domain controllers are global catalogs now we know that active directory is say database the name of the active directory database file is ntds dot dit which is present on every domain controller now this ntds dot dit database file is logically partitioned into four partitions and these four partitions are also known as active directory replication partitions so every domain controller will have these four partitions by default so these partitions are schema configuration application and domain partition so schema configuration and domain partition are say mandatory partition and application partition is optional so if we integrate any application say such as dns in our active directory a fourth partition will be created and that partition is known as application partition so these are logical partitions of our active directory also known as active directory replication partitions so every domain controller will have these partitions and in say nowadays dns is absolutely integrated with all the say every domain controller in our forest so these are the four replication partitions now let's see as all three domain controllers are a global catalog let's see what happens so there is another there are some partitions created after this uh, this configuration of a global catalog this is called as global catalog partitions so let us focus on dubai dc now so there will be one more partition created on dubai dc and this will be partial domain partition of the domain west.contoso.com and there will be one more partition created for global catalog and this time it would be partial domain partition for the domain east.contoso.com so this contoso.com domain global catalog will have two partial domain partitions one for west.contoso.com and one for east.contoso.com so same thing we will be for west.contoso.com global catalog there will be a partial domain partition of the domain east.contoso.com and a partial domain partition for the domain contoso.com so if any say any one queries for any object to this domain controller for any object which is present in contoso.com or east.contoso.com the global catalog will be able to answer the query and same thing goes with our east.contoso.com that is the paris dc that there will be two global catalogs partition created one for say partial domain partition of the domain contoso.com and partial domain partition of the domain west.contoso.com so in this manner our global catalog is able to resolve all the queries of any object in the entire forest so hope you have understood the basic concept behind the global catalog so let's summarize say what we have seen today so we the today's session was on global catalog and we started the session with what is global catalog and what is a global catalog server so we understood what a global catalog is 
and what is a global catalog server and we also understood why we require global catalog and we understood active directory and global catalog partitions so if you want to know more about active directory we have a entire playlist active directory for beginners so request you to visit that playlist to watch the videos over there so thanks for joining today and have a great day